so you sign up for a differential equations class and the time has come when you're ready to do real math. What I mean by that, don't treat this class as if it was any other math class that you had to take before because it was in your required classes. So this is really different branch of mathematics altogether and really exciting because up until right now, you were constricted and limited to these idealized, oversimplified systems and scenarios, which are clearly not real and not that interesting. Reality is way trickier and more interesting. A difficulty in understanding and imagining reality, and that difficulty we are in. The behavior of things is so fantastic. It's so wonderfully different. However, mathematically heavy and cumbersome to handle. So that's why those problems usually said, assume zero wind, assume closed system, no external forces acting on the system. How many times have you read that in your physics or chemistry class? Okay, no more. You're set free from closed systems and static systems, and you can get your mathematical wings to handle reality and open and dynamic systems. Not only that, but you're going to be able to study a totally new genre of uh, quantities, which are dynamic quantities. Quantities that are kind of like living organisms. They're constantly changing and uh, kicking and doing things, right? And um, algebraic equations are there to handle static, frozen in time quantities, but differential equations would allow you to study those juicy, interesting quantities. Okay, so what exactly is the purpose of this class, differential equations? Let's open the textbook and look at the first sentence of the first chapter. It says that the purpose of this book is to help you predict future, okay? So pretty ambitious, predict future, like what type of business is that, right? Now, not in this sense by any means, more so using mathematical models, right? And predict future of what? We're not talking about future uh, in abstract, we're talking about future of a quantity. And if you're thinking that this has philosophical implications, your intuitions are right. This class has a lot of uh, philosophical implications and people who laid the groundwork for differential equations, I'm talking about Laplace here, but others as well, and you will learn Laplace transforms, it's a big deal in differential equations, was a philosopher, full-time philosopher as well as mathematician. And he grappled with this idea of a future is predictable, that must mean that future is already determined, that the conditions that are going to happen are already kind of written. The specific conditions are already kind of set. So it's determined. Otherwise, how can I know it today? Right? And another thing that he struggled with is, okay, let's assume future is determined. Can it be known by a human being? That's a separate question because uh, it might be determined and not we might not be able to know it. And he said that maybe an all-knowing being, which obviously that's not us, would be able to know determined future. He was a deterministic thinker, but he did grapple with these questions uh, about the existence of God or his hand in our lives. So he really wrestled with these ideas his whole life. And the biography of Laplace, it is a biography of a man who wrestles with God really his whole life. And he ended his life with this sentence, we are chasing phantoms. So insofar as future of some quantities is determined, then how can we study that? And how can we know that? And differential equations gives you um, t technical tools to study that future. Okay, so future of what though? Future of a quantity, specific quantity. This class studies the evolution of a quantity. How does quantity evolve? And how can quantity change? It can't change its hair color or haircut. It can't change its smell. It can't change its mood. It can only change its value, right? Quantity can only change by changing its value. It can go up or down. It can go up fast or it can go up gradually. It can go up by a lot or it can go up by a little bit, right? So it can do a lot of things and it's continuously changing. So these quantities that are continuously changing, a totally new genre of quantities than you're used to handling and studying. And you might ask, wait, algebraic equations that I've been using my whole life until now, we're studying quantities too. 
And yes, that's true. You have been studying quantities using algebraic equations, but those quantities were static quantities. Algebraic equations are great to study area of a triangle, of a given triangle that doesn't change the length of its sides, or distance between two fixed points that doesn't change. Distance between London and Paris, algebraic equations will do a great job to study that. But dynamic quantities, such as stock prices, or population growth, or spread of a virus that is continuously changing, it is always in flux. Those types of um, quantities can't be studied by algebraic equations that fr would freeze them in time and would allow you to look at it in an instantaneous period. That's probably not what you're interested in, right? The reason why you study it is probably because you want to, want to see what it's doing at all times. And differential equations are designed to handle those types of quantities, to allow it to move and do its own thing and still track it. And the reason why you see dy over dx in every differential equation, derivative, is because derivative's one job is to study change, right? The itty bitty uh, change in the function dy over itty bitty change in time, dt or dx, whatever your parameter is, right? Derivatives job is synonymous to studying change. So dy over dx is if you want to give a differential equations a logo, it would be dy over dx or dy over dt. So you can now study these very interesting dynamic quantities, such as population. People are leaving the country, that will decrease it. Some people are being born, that increases it. Some people die, that decreases it. Some people move in from different countries, that will increase it. And that's happening as we speak. It is happening all the time. So it's a really living type of a dynamic, kicking, screaming type of a quantity. So you need differential equations that allows this quantity to be moving and alive and still be able to track its change. And algebraic equations simply cannot do that. They're not designed to do it. That's why differential equations are so necessary for you because these quantities that I just described, those are the real interesting qu uh, quantities, whether it is for scientists or social scientists, right? As you can imagine. Another thing that has changed about your life now that you're in this class is that you're no longer constricted to closed systems. How many times have you read in your chemistry or physics textbook to assume a closed system? No external forces are acting on the system, right? No longer that needs to be the case. Now you can handle dynamic systems, not only dynamic quantities, but dynamic systems. What I mean by that is, and I have a little demonstration video here that I'm gonna uh, talk you through. A very funny incident just happened in my house yesterday. We broke a glass in this extremely peculiar way, a perfect circle. What are the odds of that happening? So I thought that would be perfect for this video, so I'm gonna use it. First, we're gonna use a static system. What I mean by that, a closed system where we have a glass without a hole, right? So we're gonna pour water into the glass and there's no water that escapes the vessel. It's like there's no leaking or exiting of the water. So flow out rate does not depend on time. There's no flow out happening here. Water is only being added to this glass, okay? So this is the type of scenario where that you would study using algebraic equations. You don't need differential equations to study this. If you probably have had uh, examples like this, like calculate the time that it takes to fill up the tank or something like that. Now, if this glass was a differential equations glass, meaning it had a hole in it and some water was allowed to escape it, then flow out rate would depend on time and obviously flow in rate uh, naturally depends on time as well. So both flow in and flow out are time dependent now. That is not a closed system. That is no longer static system. That's a dynamic system, and you can study that only using differential equations, not algebraic equations, okay? So isn't that exciting? And that this is a problem that you're gonna see probably within the first two weeks of your class. So you are no longer constricted to static quantities, no longer constricted to static systems, and no longer constricted to toy problems with idealized scenarios, okay? Problems that you've been dealing with before become real now. For example, if you were asked to um, write down all the forces acting on a bridge and to balance them so that the bridge doesn't collapse, you couldn't take into account effects of wind, 
so the suspension bridges have to be really aerodynamic. Also, earthquakes can happen and bridges are built to kind of handle moderate type of an earthquake. But you couldn't take any of that into account. You also couldn't take oscillation or damping um, and that, that you had to assume that those are zero, which in the real world they're not. Now, in this class, you'll be able to bring in all those variables that do affect the bridge, the real bridge, and be able to have all of those in your model. So differential equations is so robust that it allows you to see the real reality or the real world, which is so much more tricky. And this is the example that you're gonna go over, okay, of a real bridge. Differential equations are everywhere. If you want to talk about anything, any real phenomena, most of the time you will need differential equations. And there are a lot of classes of differential equations, both in undergrad and in grad. But this is a branch, as you could expect from this discussion, this is a branch of mathematics really used by engineers because they have real world problems to solve. They can't afford to assume these idealized simplified scenarios and be building bridges in the real world, right? So I hope that you realize what type of a shift in your mathematical career this is. This is not similar to any other classes. This really is a different genre of mathematics altogether. And there are tons of differential equations classes that you will need to take if you want to become a mathematician or an engineer. And uh, the reason why it is so important is because most of the real life natural phenomenon is described by differential equations and not algebraic equations. So hopefully you will understand how special this class is and what it means to you as a human being to be able to understand the real world through mathematics. Abstract, right? Mathematics could really describe reality as we understand. The best you can do is to describe some mathematical structure. You say they're things that satisfy the Dirac equation or something like that, which you can't understand what that means without mathematics. I mean, the mathematical description of reality is where we're always led.